If you want to be stress-free from hitting your sales target in 2023, then this video is for you. I was on a call with one of our clients and uh, basically we had a conversation about sales targets, you know, and how to achieve it so on and so forth. And she was kind of kind of feeling worried about like the sales target, feeling stressed, pressured about how, how far she is behind her target, yada yada, and then everything else, right? And perhaps, you know, maybe you have felt it or been through it before, chasing after your sales target and being very far away from your target is not really necessarily a fun thing, right? When what usually happens, and in this case for her, is that it spiral down into some form of like anxiety, low self-esteem, feeling not good enough and stress and even like just get paralyzed, right? Like you don't even know, because so much overwhelmed, you don't even know like what to move, how to move forward in that sense, right? And honestly, like she's not the only one, like we have, I have like met people um, that kind of like broke down and kind of like almost went into the mild depression because it's just too stressed with the sales targets. And it's a funny thing because when it comes to dealing with stress, you know, there's obviously the kind where you're really not earning money and you're really stressed. And then there's also the other type group of advisors that, you know, kind of earning good money, like maybe four or five K every single month is decent. Um, but still stressed and still even like, broke down because they can't hit like those goals that they set for themselves. Anyway, you know, really like mental health is in the advisory space is something that most people don't talk about. But again, that's not the point for this video, right? The point is, you know, basically she asked me how to manage stress, you know, and I just want to share uh, the steps to manage stress because I believe, you know, it will lead to better productivity, you know, keeps you calmer and give you a good state of mind to really help you actually achieve the targets uh, that you set yourself up for in 2023 in this year. Again, if you don't know me, my name is Benjamin Ong. I'm the founder of Authentic Advice Systems, where we help advisors basically make more money while being happy, purposeful, and authentic. Okay, so I made these videos because I really hope the lessons I've learned and taught to others might be valuable for you so that can, you can make like a lot of money and hopefully one day you work closer with us, okay? And join our community, okay? If you don't, it's fine. Uh, just lots of love for you and just enjoy the videos. Back to the main of the video, right? So more often than not, when we feel like stress, or like anxiety or worry about like not hitting our goals, there are usually like three key variables and that's what you're gonna go through in this video, okay? So the first one is basically the goal. So this is the easiest one and for this factor, you know, we will talk about like your financial goals or usually kind of like achievements, whether it's MDRT, COD or whatnot, okay? So if you want to feel less stress, the easiest way to deal with like the goal factor is just basically to change your goal <laughs> downwards. So maybe instead of aiming for COD, you maybe want to do two rounds instead, right? Two MDRT. If they are doing two MDRT, maybe you want to do one round instead, right? Or maybe instead of like aiming for 70K FYC or commissions in a year, maybe you just want to go for like 60 or like 55. And if you can do that, like it automatically, like immediately just reduces the stress and eases off the tension immediately. Right? The reason for that is because then the probability of hitting the goal increases, right? So it's like if I do, instead of 100K, I go to like 50 and then suddenly you feel less stress because you know for a right fact, it gives you that feeling, you know, the kind of feeling where you know that definitely can hit one, like definitely can earn the money. So it decreases that. So therefore it removes, like the funny thing is like, even without like doing anything, like doing more sales, just by reducing it, you know, you literally just like feel a lot better and you feel a lot more calmer and feel happy and you can actually work. Most of the time, in my observations, is that most advisors wouldn't want to reduce their goals or set a low lower goal, primarily due to a few reasons, right? Number one, they have ego. You know, when they want to prove people wrong, they're in this industry, they want to prove their family, they want to prove their spouse, they want to prove their friends wrong, they want to achieve ABC, you know, to let, other people, let the whole world know that they can achieve it, right? Or like even like number two, peer and management pressure, especially at the start of the year when you have like those goal setting stuff, and then it's like everybody has to kind of pledge their goals and make it transparent to everybody. So obviously it's, it's not the nicest, or like based on like societal norms, especially in agency where you want to declare a goal that is way smaller than most people, right? It's kind of like MDRT is the bare minimum right now. The one, uh, it's kind of an like unspoken norm whereby we have this notion or this stereotype whereby if you have a small goal that you want, you are kind of like a loser. <laughs> that because you're kind of like, oh, uh, you know, you're, you're not gonna achieve any much, you're a loser, you're not a winner and everything else, right? So people don't want that and that's why they don't want to change the goal and that's why they always set higher goals, right? The last one, uh, amongst many others, what I realized is that it's, the reason why they don't lower their goals because they also have inflated financial commitments. You know, where is it like they have a house, they have a five bedroom flat, they bought condo or they bought like sports car or whatever it is and they kind of enjoy their lifestyle. And what happens here is that they have to set those goals in order to basically provide and maintain that kind of lifestyle. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong or right based on these reasons, but it's just that if you have all these reasons and then you set a goal that is so high to the extent that it causes you stress and you're unable to deal with it, then you know it leaves room for thought whether is that really a goal that you really want. In my observation, a little kind of like problem with the above reasons that I've seen so far, like at least for in my worldview, is that like advisors who tend to set 
and chase their goals based on these reasons, usually two things happen, right? Number one, either they don't achieve it because they're too stressed and they just keep thinking about the target, the target, the target, and you know, um, might take unethical actions, for example, so they don't achieve it. Or number two, they're unhappy both while chasing after the goal and even after achieving it, right? Because they'll be like, okay, you know what? <laughs> like, honestly, why work so hard to really do all these things? Is it that worthy? They start to question themselves, right? So this is kind of like observations. And the reason why that happens, or this one of either one or both of these situations happens, is because these goals are not theirs, right? It's based on expectation of other people, their ego, their friends, family, um, the heats, whatever it is. And it just kind of like creates arbitrary expectations that they set for themselves. The whole idea when it comes to goal, you know, it's like obviously there's one part about reducing a goal, but the, the big idea behind this is that if you can actually sit down and choose the goal that we truly desire and want for ourselves. Not everybody needs to be MDRT achiever, right? Not everybody needs to be COT achiever. Not everybody needs to earn six figures a year. Now that makes sense. I've seen advisors that have been very successful. that has been like earning like 50K for the first three to four years, like income, right? And then subsequently you do like 60, 70, 80, 90, like slow increase on his, I think it's seventh or eighth year. I think he was doing like 100 grand in FYC, in commissions, and this was purely like, it was very easy for this person, right? And and the thing is because like the first seven years, he just took his time and really built out the foundations, right? And he's in no rush, and like he's only like 35 or something like that. So it's like, it's still good money. That makes sense. So he took home, maybe take home about 150,000, uh, 160,000, yes, it's still pretty decent. And he enjoys the work a lot, right? Like if you can really choose the goals and kind of like put other people out, like, you know, just don't think about that and think about what you truly want in terms of time freedom, how you want your lifestyle and kind of like what kind of work you want to do. Then that will provide a more intrinsic motivation rather than an intrinsic one. So that's the first one, goal. Now, the second one, right, is time. With most goals, like the material or financial targets or the MDRT or achievements usually comes with a timeline, right? a deadline and a duration. So and in industry, the most common timeline that we set for ourselves usually is one year. Why? Very simple, right? Because most of our awards usually happens within a year. And of course there are exceptions, you know, if you're in management, and of course, you know, sometimes your promotion could be one and a half years, two years, so on and so forth, right? Uh, and things like that, right? But usually it happens within a year, you know? And in fact, nowadays it's like pretty common for advisors, you know, to really achieve their MDRT within like four months or like within three months, right? And and you might know this because, you know, kind of like the the MDRT standards kind of like dropped in a sense. So it feels like you can type, you can shorten it and everything else, you know? Or maybe some, I, I have people telling me that they want to achieve like their COT within like the first year or the second year of business, you know? Now, obviously, like all these are great goals. And also the, the key thing is that having a shortened timeline will increase the pressure and stress immensely, right? So then the question becomes like, why do we do it? You know, why do we set an arbitrary goal within an arbitrary timing, right? That's, that's the question we ask, like, why do we do that, right? So if we can kind of have a food for thought and change it the other way, which is like, instead of doing it MDRT within six months or instead of earning 100 grand within six months, can I aim to achieve it in one and a half years? Can I aim to achieve it in my second year? Can I aim to accumulate, let's say your goal is that you want to stash up maybe if, half a million or like 500,000 in cash, right? And maybe you're like, you know what? I want to have 500K cash in two years, you know? And as a result of that, you need to do like, I don't know, maybe like two COTs um, every year, for example, right? Then the question here is like, can you want that 500K in like three years or four years time? Because if you can do that and delay that, then the amount of stress reduces, right? Now, I'm not saying we don't go for it, but I think it's just kind of like a, because if you think about stress, more often than not, it's less to do with the external conditions or the circumstances, but more to do with the internal ones, right? It's about how we see things more than just what we see. And if we can tweak all these things within our head, then the stress goes. And in fact, we might, we will be more likely in a better state, you know, to reach those goals in the first place, right? That's kind of like a big idea here when it comes to time, you know, just kind of like expanding the time horizon. You know, and again, like I mentioned, if it's really because of your own true desires, then yes, you know, please go for it. But I, again, I found a lot of advisors, the kind of range that they didn't want to be at is that, you know, they're earning like 50 to maybe like 80 grand in terms of income all in in a year. And they get the MDRT in the second, third, fourth, fifth year and taking it a little bit slower. Like I feel a lot of advisors are very, very happy with that. And they get able to enjoy the lifestyle, which honestly is one of the reasons why people join, right? Is to earn a little bit more money than the corporate job. And then like having a time flexibility. With regards to the one year thing, like in other industry, I, I realized like everybody just sticks to that one year. I mean, it makes sense, right? Because like the company's financial year is one year, um, MBRT is one year thing, you know, so on and so forth, right? But this is something I always tell our own clients and I always say this, uh, even when I was an advisor, which is 31st December 2359, which is like 11.59 PM, you know, when it strikes midnight, which is the new year, right? You need to understand that like, 
thirty first December is just the end of the financial year. It's just the end of the year for during which like your institutions gauge whether you have MDRT or not, right? But you need to understand it's not the end of a career, right? It's the end of the financial year, but it's not the end of a career. If you take one step further, which I want to go a little bit just for you to really have a good idea, uh, a good food for thought experiment, which is, you see, MDRT is created by the institution, right? The timeline is also created by them. But the question I'm asking is that what if MDRT institution says that, you know, in order to qualify for MDRT, you only need 30k FYC. What do you think that will be doable? Probably. Or what if the criteria for MDRT is the production is for two years instead of one year? Right, that could be a lot more manageable, right? But my point here is that everything is kind of like to a large degree a social construct. These are still important in order for society to thrive and for humans to really move towards um, better goals and evolution. But I think if you can really think about like what you truly want, you know, and not play just by like, other people's rules, you know, I think you'll be a lot happier, a lot more purposeful and really kind of enjoy your work and earn the income. That's number two, okay? So again, like first one, we talk about like reducing your goals or rather choosing the goals that actually suits you, that you really, really truly want. Uh, putting other people's opinion aside. Number two, expand your time horizon, you know, so that you can reduce the stress immediately, right? And not play by other people's rules. Now, number three is this, okay? So now at this current point in time, you might be thinking, okay, Ben, I know what you say makes sense, but I am not willing to change the time horizon and the goal. Why don't I just change myself? Why don't I just work harder? I learn more, you know, I work more, you know, yada, yada, everything else. Now, that is a very fair question, right? Which brings to the third variable. The third variable, when it comes to reducing stress, right, or managing it, is actually your capacity. It is a variable that most advisors like really think or consider. And, and what do I mean by capacity, right? So maybe I explain through an analogy. It's kind of like, you know, we need to first understand that like every one of us are built differently and every one of us have a different form of capacity to tolerate stress, and everything else, right? Obviously, this capacity can be changed to a large degree and can be honed and, and basically grown uh, with that, right? So same analogy here is that when someone doesn't take into account their capacity, it's kind of like you own a Toyota car, but you drive it like a Ferrari, okay? And two things usually happens. First one, the Toyota obviously just can't make it like a Ferrari, right? And you can't drive it like a Ferrari. And even if it tries, it just loses and the engine burns out faster, just purely because like it's not built to go fast and hard. Now, how do I know this? I know it's for a fact because I drove a Toyota before, the Toyota Camry, I think it's my dad's car. And, you know, I just kind of like accelerate and then brake, accelerate and brake. And in the end, like, you know, thing, thing, you know, literally the engine kind of like burnt and everything else. Okay, so, so, so like I try to drive it like a sports car, but it doesn't work that way. Okay, so obviously you burn out and everything else, right? Now, secondly, it's like, even if we swap the engine, like if you put a Ferrari's engine into the Toyota ones, like it's still gonna be dangerous and it's still gonna not gonna make it purely because, right, the infrastructure, the aerodynamics of the car isn't suited for the engine. So this is why if some of you are driving or if you have driven before, if you have driven like a continental car, like a Mercedes, Audi or whatever it is, you know, when you drive it at a high speed compared to a Japanese car and you drive it at a high speed, what usually happens here is that the continental car is more stable, but the ones that is a Japanese car, right? Even if you drive the same speed, it kind of like a bit floaty, you feel a little bit, you know, and stuff like that, right? So that's kind of like a big idea here, right? So this is what I mean by like capacity, you know? And, and, and another analogy to kind of like, drive like kind of like the point forward uh, across for capacity it's also kind of like the same reason like why you don't try to run a full marathon after one year of not running right and even if you try to run even if you do go for the run and you try to complete it within, within two hours because you will try to compete at the top right you want to get you have a goal right you have a, a shorter timeline and you had a big goal which is run a full marathon right even if you try and do it and complete it within two hours even after like after you have not run for one year you most likely give up due to exhaustion. That makes sense, you know? So that's kind of like a big idea here when it comes to capacity. So now that you answer our capacity, the next question then becomes, okay, how do we, you see, if we don't want to change our goals, we don't want, if you don't want to reduce our goals, we do not want to reduce our time horizon, uh, increase our time horizon, then the question becomes, how do we increase our capacity? Because if we can obviously drive a Ferrari car and have the engine and everything else, obviously we can go fast. Before we can answer the question, in order to do this, it first requires the understanding of this concept called pressure versus stress. Okay, now, this is something that I, I've kind of like had a conversation with our clients and kind of like uh, in my head, right? So you think about it, what's the difference between pressure and stress? So you see, the first, we talk about similarities, right? The first similarity is that between pressure and stress is that both have a form of force being applied. Like pressure is a force, stress is a force as well, right? The difference here is that, in, from the way I see, is that pressure arises when force is being applied externally, while stress is force created from within. So to illustrate this, 
is let's say for example yeah let's say for example like we we have like a like a remote control here right so for example let's say we place you know those pressure hydraulic machine right to apply force on this remote control right so let's say for example i, I just put my finger here i apply some pressure what's gonna happen nothing right it, it's, it's fine like this entire thing the infrastructure can we we hold like the pressure okay now if i increase the pressure right and I put it loud a lot more, right? And in fact, I, I'm not sure you can hear this or you can see this, but like there's some form of like sound happening, right? So imagine I push it, push it like I increase the pressure and the force by so much. What's going to happen? What's going to happen is that they're going to start to crack. And when it starts to crack, that is stress. The whole point here is that it's pressure until it becomes stress when the capacity of the object is unable to withhold the pressure. That makes sense. So it's kind of like everything that's a force coming in. Okay, it's pressure. I can move forward. I can move forward. It's fine. But once it gets inside your head, you can't tank and endure that, that pressure and you start to crack within. That's where stress happens. Again, if you really look at it, whether is it pressure or stress depends on the capacity of the object, whether can it withstand the force being applied. Now, again, when there's a crack in the object, is it usually a good sign when there's a crack? No. It means that it might give way at any point in time, it might get even worse. There'll be some leaks and therefore not sustainable, right? And this is the reason why we want pressure and not stress. And this is also, you know, the saying, which is like, um, what? Pressure creates diamonds, right? Right? Cre cre pressure is the one that creates diamond, right? You realize it's pressure creates diamond, not stress creates diamond, right? So what we really want uh, is pressure, right? So likewise, if to apply this into our context, then what it means is that in order to grow our capacity, we actually want pressure as the driving force to help us grow and therefore achieve our goals. But in the moment it turns into stress, and what are indicators of stress are like anxiety, overwhelm, paralysis, burnout, yeah, it most likely you're gonna be stressed, right? And maybe for a short while it's fine, but if it happens for a long period of time, you know, there's really a lot of negative consequences like health and everything else, and less to do, and and then don't even talk about financials, right? Health is going to be a big one that's going to get affected. Okay, so it requires some form of level of like self awareness to kind of understand who you are as a person, how you function, and how much pressure you can apply onto yourself. Now, everybody has different capacity and kind of like different life, different goals. So play your own game and think of like how much pressure you want to apply for yourself. Like there are three situations, right? First one is that you don't apply any pressure at all. Then what's going to happen is that you're not going to take much action you're going to remain the same, you're going to stagnate, you're going to be the same old guy or girl doing the advisory work, right? Now, the second one is that you apply too much pressure, it becomes stress. And what's going to happen is that you're still going to stagnate at some point in time because you can't move. You're overwhelmed. You, you can't think straight. You feel life is a mess. You're sick and tired of life, right? And then commit suicide and everything else. Hopefully that's not you, okay? So that's the second secret. The, the third one, which is what I want to, to do is to apply more pressure, but we need to understand how much pressure we can have, but apply more pressure to the extent that we, it makes us move forward. There's some form of like pressure that we want to, that kind of like pushes us, but not to the extent that it stops us. Now this again varies very individually, you know, but if you can really kind of like understand this, then this will really be a game changer when it comes to like your career, when it comes to achieving your sales targets. And the last note about like pressure versus stress or capacity is, is this is like what I said, I think this is quoted by Ron Buffett, right? I think he said like, you know, you can't produce a baby in one month by getting nine women pregnant, right? Same thing as working out, you can't expect to never gym in your entire life and then go to the weights and trying to live like Arnold Schwarzenegger. You know, it just doesn't work that way. So it, it still requires a form of time, so you got to give yourself some time and understand yourself better. So these are the three factors. So there's the goal, time horizon, and capacity, right? So again, if you want to reduce your stress level, stress to a level that you can manage immediately, you can either reduce the goal, find a goal that you truly want. Number two, expand the time horizon and know that it's okay to not accomplish this particular goal within the same time as your colleagues because you are living your life, right? Nobody else is living your life. The third one is to increase pressure to grow your capacity, but not stress. Before I end of this video, I just want to say that the whole point isn't really to slow down on our goals or don't care about MDRD, COD and chase after our goals, but rather understanding these three variables that we can play around or kind of tweak with, right? So that it removes kind of like stress and pressure and allow us really to be more like productive and effective in working. Because the question that we ask ourselves, which is, would we earn more money and be more successful if we are calmer and more clear in our heads and more productive? Like, pretty much the answer is going to be yes, right? So, which is why like, the truth here is that if you're overly stressed for a lower period of time, it's really not sustainable, you'll be that productive anyway, because the emotions of like worry, stress, anxiety, or panic takes up bandwidth, attention, and energy, okay? So if you're stressed out over your goals last year, or, or maybe you didn't hit them, or barely hit them, like what I want you to do is really take some time to think about the three variables, 
how to tweak it so there's enough pressure. Time horizon is great. The goal is great, you know, but not to the extent that it stress and, and kill you, right? You know, and if you can do all this, you will be very, very likely to achieve it, even if everything else remains the same, which is like your skill sets and everything else, right? But of course, that is a totally separate issue, right? But we need to settle the internal one, okay? So that's kind of a big idea here for this video. Um, please do these three things. And thank you for watching this video. I really hope this is helpful for you, especially like 2023 is here, it's the beginning of the year. Uh, it really helped you to kind of refine and look at your goals, probably just because like agency set goal setting has just like passed, right? So I hope this video is helpful for you. If you found that this was very useful, please do two things. Number one, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, my video editor was telling me that half the views on this uh, on these videos and channels like you guys are not even subscribing so please subscribe that because I'm going to put more videos out number two right send this video to someone you know who is stressed who is obviously not happy chasing after their goals and hopefully this could really help them okay if not cheers thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one